Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to finals weekend. Oh, my goodness, of the Edmonton Public Schools Esports Spring 2021 League of Legends tournament. We've got the top eight playoffs bracket. We're so excited to kick this off this weekend to wrap up this event. So it's nice to see everyone. Uh, my name is Victor Lee. I'm the president and co-founder of the Alberta Esports Association. And joined here with me is Mr. Artem, AKA Corbett Artem from McNally High School. Corbett, want to introduce hi yourself? Yes, hi, I'm, I'm Mr. Artem. I'm a teacher at McNally, like Victor said, and I'm also the steering committee chair for uh, Edmonton Public Schools Esports. Uh, really, really happy to be here. Really happy to have this event uh, just happen. So thank you, Asta, Victor. <laughs> for uh, for helping us out coordinating this, this is great. No, it was it's certainly you know a joint effort between both your committee and our organization to to really make this thing happen. And this is a, such a huge first step um, in, into bringing esports and gaming into into the high school and junior high level at this capacity. And and we're so excited to have so much support from you and and all the other teachers who are involved with with pushing us forward. All the coaches from all of these schools. And certainly, there's a little bit of bias to McNally High School between the two of us here, <laughs> given what we're wearing and our, yeah. our tapestries. <laughs> but we're, we're certainly here to cheer for all the schools. And, and we're so excited to see that we got 22 schools that were, or 22 teams, rather, that were interested in, in getting involved um, into this event across, I think it was 15 or 16 uh, schools across uh, across yeah. Edmonton. So I hope this is the start of something. Oh, I know this is the start of something really <laughs> special. And so I'm so excited to take this journey with you, Corbett. This is this is really great. Yeah, this is uh, great to see. Like you said, 16 schools this year. We got to invite the junior highs. Last year was high schools only. So we are seeing some growth every year and, and making this uh, bigger and better for everybody. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So can we, like, I'd love to kind of poke your, your brain here, Corbett, in terms of you championing this movement. Can you talk about, you know, what, what the impact that bringing esports into high schools and, and junior highs can have? Yeah, absolutely. So just first of all, esports are good for kids, just plain and simple. But first, <laughs> uh, social impact, just it, it's uh, an opportunity for kids to connect with one another around an area of interest. Uh, kids are playing games anyway, so why not just bring those into the school, officially support that, uh, provide a space and let them compete against one another. Yeah, I, I certainly sympathize with that, even from my own experience. It's, this will show my age, but you know, when I was in uh back in high school in the 2000s um you know full disclosure i was a you know i was a geek i was very i was very much a gamer so um i was very fortunate to have a and i grew up growing up in rector as well um hunting hills high school for anyone who knows rector schools um i i was very fortunate to have a multimedia teacher who was willing to open up his computer lab during lunch and after schools for me and my group of friends to 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 you know sit in there and play games and to socialize with our group of friends um, and, you know, likewise with, with the local librarian in Rick here as well to kind of foster this safe environment for, you know, our little social group to, to play games together. Um, especially back then, uh, this was before we had online games, you know, I was playing on the Nintendo GameCube. And so you had to play with people in person. And so to be able to have, you know, this very informal social uh, our student group uh, to facilitate video games was just a huge win. But I know that not a lot of schools encourage that or support that so i was very lucky to, to to have that opportunity for myself um so I'm, I'm really happy to to see that you're championing this corbett and all these other these other teachers are, are doing the same and to provide this environment for their students definitely i don't think i told you this story before but back when i was in high school we had a guitar hero tournament and it was the biggest event that uh, we had <laughs> while i was there yeah and so just video games there's a draw it's it's very engaging it's a place where people can go have fun as players but also to watch and i think we're seeing this right now on your twitch channel like people are going there they're watching our our different players and students from the different schools and so there's different ways different entry points for different people mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is like a completely under-recognized group of students as well, right? Like, uh, schools are so often keen on towards like certain activities. And, you know, as you mentioned, kids are playing games regardless. Mm -hmm. And it's so much better to, rather than have them go home and play in this online environment where they're just playing with strangers and they're kind of left to the wolves for the schools to actually facilitate an environment for them to have like after school programs or lunch hour programs and create like a safe uh, environment for them to compete to provide some role modeling opportunities. Uh, Definitely. Time, yeah, absolutely. It's it's actually really it's really great, and it's hard to imagine how far things have gone too. I mean, even 
going to the University of Alberta, like I started the Super Smash Brothers club there, which is still still ongoing. But back that was back in the in the mid 2010s, and it was really difficult to convince. <laughs> hey, can we do a student group around video games? Like <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. Like even even that you know within the last decade it was it was yes. like a difficult thing to, to talk about and i mean certainly still is but there's a lot of momentum and i think the stigma the negative stigma around gaming and esports is starting to be challenged and so yeah, yeah. uh well just as far as like we've talked about the welcoming space but as mm -hmm. far as other social impacts uh like I, I i dug deep my team and i we did a lot of literature review we looked at the, mm -hmm. the the guiding documents but alberta education they're all about growing competencies and skills so social skills that are our students are getting through this, our teamwork, communication, uh, just looking at personal growth and well-being. So just it's a space for one, but just being able to work on that team and communicate, uh, strategize, uh, pre-match, during the match, there's there's so much going on with esports. Yeah, I think it really, I certainly, you know, I won't be here to make the argument that esports <laughs> is comparable to traditional sports in terms yeah, of, you know, physical uh, capacity, but um, what I always like to mention is that esports brings all the, 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 the good parts and, and the bad of competition yes. and camaraderie yes. and community um, and teaches some really valuable lessons, but to an entirely different audience uh, and a, a much more inclusive audience in that, in that sense as well because of the, 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 the low level of uh, entry, the low barrier of entry uh, for, for this space. Yeah, inclusion is a huge part. Uh, accessibility. Uh, this year, you know, I I was a bit surprised that our junior high teams didn't go on to to playoffs. It could be the choice of game. I think talking to teachers, you know, League of Legends. Maybe that's not the one the junior high students mm -hmm. are playing right now. But I I really want to see some junior highs in the final <laughs> finals taking out our high school. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The the age barrier, the gender yeah. barrier. That's all really dispelled in the world of esports. We don't need to have. Uh, you know, very clear divisions. because It's kind of an, an even playing field for, for really anyone. And we also have center high, which is a, an older demographic mm -hmm. uh, that's involved here as well. So it's it's really quite great. Um, and, you know, I, 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 we already have a lot of momentum, not just from all the schools here at Edmonton, but we have schools across Alberta that have caught wind of this event or have seen kind of the momentum happening, um, doing internal surveys. And we see time and time again that one, one of the things that students across the province really want in part of their schools is esports and gaming and some level of acknowledgement it's one of the most popular activities now and we should start supporting that yeah uh, just like you i've heard from teachers all over the province in calgary parkland just they reach out they yeah. want to make this happen and so there's an appetite they're hearing it from their students and it's really great to see events like this going on absolutely and i do want to give props to you corbett for championing this at essentially a grassroots level building together, you know, this committee of junior high teachers, high school teachers like yourself, as well as coaches who are building out these esports committees and and making these events happen at this community and grassroots level. And that's starting to cause a lot of traction in other areas. We're working with other committees from other cities and other regions of Alberta that are starting to form to kind of follow in your footsteps to really elevate this thing province wide. So it's this is certainly the start of something really special. Well, thank you very much. Group effort. I'm really grateful that everybody's bringing something. Like my my committee, we have a couple athletics guys that bring that experience, mm -hmm. which we can very much learn from. And uh, just, yeah, uh, everybody brings something to table for that. Uh, the, the next part here, just everything's so related, but uh, yeah. <laughs> esports are engaging. Like they're just so engaging and mm -hmm. just doing a literature review. Just uh, students that are involved in extracurriculars, like that positively affects studies. It affects their attendance positively. And just so we've seen the link there, just looking through the re research as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and part of the goal too is to not just foster youth engagement and participation, but to start developing talent, uh, talent pipelines and developmental opportunities for these students and just for the public as a whole. So being able to foster the industry of esports, not just the the activities themselves and actually competing as a player, but fostering the development of the actual industry and the ecosystem as a bigger picture starts at this level, you know, providing opportunities for these students to participate in esports and to put on esports events and learn about production and broadcasting yes, and definitely. shoutcasting, yeah. event management. These are all, you know, legitimate technical skills that they can take moving forward to, to, to build this this industry up and that's actually something that we should talk about so behind <laughs> the scenes we've had student volunteers this whole this this whole weekend as well as last weekend putting this event together 
Um, we've, we've had uh, a number of student volunteers from a number of different schools who are officiating the, tea, uh, the, the, game, the games behind the scenes. Of course, we've had um, them casting as well and just doing quite a lot of activities. You want to comment on that, Corbett, and the, uh, the, the impact that that has? Yeah, I think that just like you said, frequently when people hear about esports, they're just like, okay, so we're going to be having kids playing games. But that's only a very small aspect of that. And yes, we do see post-secondary starting to offer scholarships for our, our student esport athletes. But there's so many opportunities. Just like you said, we have our, our student casters in there working on those broadcasting uh, career pathways. And so uh, Alberta Education, they have their CTS Career Technology Studies model. And th those are high school programs that we can build and elaborate on just under the esports umbrella. And so students broadcasting, learning all of those techniques, uh, just like we, we have the, the ASA kind of tech team right now uh, on the stream, like managing this all, <laughs> like they're the, the puppet masters behind the scenes, like we yeah. can be training students to do that as well. And uh, just, you know, with YouTube content creation, Twitch content creation, there's a huge draw just within esports. Yeah, absolutely. It's people often think of esports as just, uh, you know, the players playing, which is certainly a, a, another component of this. We're providing opportunities uh, for students to participate in like a sanctioned environment um, in all in all of these official events uh, and be able to compete and, and have that entire experience, but as well with the industry talent. And what people may not you know realize with esports is it's a significant growing industry uh, globally. And for us to have that uh, built out here in Alberta and in Canada at large, it starts with these steps, with these talent pipelines to train the next generation to actually, you know, build this ecosystem, work with yeah, and I think that just kind of along with that, um, uh, what was it with the students? I lost Victor. I lost my co-host. Hello. <laughs> oh my god, everybody! <laughs> we just like split uh, split screens there. I'm back. Okay. Okay. There was a really good point with that. Oh, uh, for the last four years, uh, just I wanted to say that Edmonton Public Schools eSports, it started with a, a group of entrepreneurial students. Like they had a vision with this eSports here that they wanted to get going. They approached me. It was their innovation and just elbow grease that really put this forward. And uh, within Alberta Education, like the three E's, that entrepreneurial spirit, innovation, uh, just like that's what we want our students to be doing. We want them to be innovating. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, just that they know they know what's going on. Like my students at the school, they're like, no, you know, Mr. Artem, this is the game that we should be playing right yeah. now. And so they very much are like one of the biggest stakeholders in this. And mm -hmm. uh, their input, elbow grease is just so important to making this happen. Yeah, it's, it's really a, about just providing those opportunities and building the landscape for these students to flourish within this space. I mean, this is beyond just the high school environment. This is more of an anecdotal story, but especially because we're doing League of Legends, the viewers may may get a kick out of this uh, little fun fact. But, uh, you know, I went to the University of Alberta with Danny Lee, Shifter, uh, who played for Team Dignitas. He's a professional League of Legends player. And he's from Edmonton. And a little bit of a fun fact for, like, esports is back in the mid 2010s when he got sponsored by a US team to compete down in the US, you know, uh, how does the US actually recognize that? What work visa do you give for an esports professional, right? So what they ended up doing was they gave him the P1A visa, which is the, the work visa for traditional athletes, uh, internationally recognized athletes. Um, and they gave that to, to Shifter so he could compete down there. And he's actually the for the first ever professional esports player to, to get that visa to, to work down the States. So that's a nice little anecdote for, for Edmonton, a, a bit of a fun fact. But but that the, the larger uh, picture there is we want to also be able to provide these activities and these uh, industry opportunities for the people here in Edmonton and in Alberta so they don't leave. And we can, we can you know, keep the talent here, avoid this, the brain drain, the talent drain, and create these opportunities for the talent that develops in this province to stay here and to, 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 to build up and cultivate the ecosystem uh, within the province. Definitely. So a lot of room for firsts. And uh, just, <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing so much growth. I'm hearing good news every day. Within the last month, we've seen a, a new arena going up. Uh, yeah, overactive media in Toronto. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Vancouver just released a public uh, strategic plan, the Vancouver Esports Strategy, uh, that was built out by uh, the Vancouver Economic Commission. So there's certainly a lot of action. Canada is kind of at the emerging stage, and we're certainly some of the biggest players to to, to kind of bring esports to to our not just our province, but also to the, to the country at large. So it's certainly exciting times.
now now's the time to get involved for sure yeah and with the uh, overwatch league uh we, we've got our our teams there still so we do have some uh like national canadian teams and it's, it is growing we are mm-hmm. seeing the growth there yeah like it, actually what, what's great too is we, we don't have the survey uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be providing the survey at the end of the event. Um, so when stick around for once all the finals is over tomorrow for the closing ceremonies with Corbin and I. Uh, we'll, we'll love to, to, to see you guys then. And uh, we'll also talk about the survey. So if you have any games you'd like to see in the future or any feedback or experiences with this event or any kind of testimonies, we'd love to hear from you so we can improve on our end and you know, give, you, give you what you're looking for and work towards that. So, so Victor... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Corbett. I, I want to talk about, like, the, the biggest part of esports for me, the, the part that I feel like it addresses and it gets to the most, and that's just that welcoming, inclusive space. We've talked a little bit about mm-hmm. it, but at the end of the day, I feel like that's what's most important for our students is just that they have a space where they can go in, uh, that they can belong, they can do what they love, and that we can support them. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Edmonton Public, one of our two, or we have three district priorities every single year, and having that welcoming uh, environment is one of them. So this very much follows under that right there. Uh, I think that this also follows within the different high schools. We have seen clubs for the longest time. It could be like Smash Club, like the the, the hoodie you're wearing right there, <laughs> the different schools. Uh, Mario yeah. Kart Club, League Club. I hear from different yeah. high schools like Jasper Place that they have 100 students like showing up weekly to play these yeah. games with one another outside of the pandemic. And so just, uh, yeah, just to have more events like this, uh, yeah. you know, have your regionals, have people practicing in order to make it out to those. Yeah, let's let's get that support and acknowledge these students, right? It's it, it really just echoes given that, you know, I grew up as one of those students, like yeah. my entire social group and how I made friends finally <laughs> growing up in high school was with with people who who shared a same love for video games at the time, right? So I was playing a lot of Super Smash Brothers and Mario Kart and we were playing a bunch of different uh, games on the PCs and mm-hmm. and that was really where I found like the, you know, lifelong friends and that continued through post secondary and that continues now, you know, more over over a decade since graduating um and still maintaining this social circle of, you know, fellow gamers and and these are the people that I call my friends and my home and my family and my community, right? So to be able to provide that opportunity um, to flourish that type of engagement and belonging and community with, with all students, that's, that's really the end here, for sure. The, the big social impact of all of that. I think some of the friends that I've known for the longest, like we play uh, video games together just weekly. Uh, just that's how we connect. It's like a phone call, just checking in with one another, seeing how it's yeah. going just while we're playing some games. That's actually like one of the the lines I've been using during this pandemic. Like, I think gamers as a whole have really certainly it's been challenging for everyone the pandemic. Um, but we I think we've had a little bit of an easier time because of how familiar we are with the online environment, using Discord and other voice channels to maintain social connection with our friends and our communities. Like even what we're doing right now, right? And uh, being able to. Uh, bring on all that community activity from the in-person um, space into the online environment. And it's the, the line I've been using during the pandemic is, you know, esports and gaming has allowed us to maintain physically or remain physically distanced, yeah. but maintain socially close. And that's one of the biggest you know, silver linings to all of this during this entire pandemic that just never seems to end. I agree. And I think that in our past conversations, one thing that we've talked about, and we've we've talked about it a little bit here today, but esports is a social thing. It's not just about being that lone gamer in the basement. Like yeah. that's the the perception that some people have when they hear video games. It's it's a, it's a social activity. Like you're playing with your buddies, uh, you're chatting, and yeah, it's very much social. Yeah, it's it's just as much about challenging like the stereotypes and negative stigma around gaming um as it is just you know advocating for esports as a whole right video games really is a social activity it's what's one of the biggest things these days and uh you know it's it's wonderful um i I want to also kind of bring attention as we kind of wrap up the opening ceremonies here uh to thank also our sponsors and all the prizes that they've provided to us uh, to make this event happen so uh corbin do you want to give a shout out to, to to for the prizes and the sponsors Sure. Uh, I Oh, I don't have the exact prize list uh, up here. I have all of the, the organizations. I'm so, so grateful for the support from uh, the gaming stadium over in Vancouver there. Thank you so, so much for the massive support to make this happen. 
uh, heavily subsidized. Uh, it did make it more accessible for our schools to participate. So thank you so much there. Uh, Herbaland, thank you very much for the, the prizing uh, for, for all of our uh, top three teams. Uh, and then also for Sport Factor for also giving some prizes. Uh, Victor, I uh, think any, anything else? Yeah, I can, yeah. I can or hit I on can, that. I have the list. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so those are our three major sponsors, and, and we're, we're so thankful to have them involved. The Gaming Stadium is also uh, the title sponsor for the Alberta Esports, uh, yeah, Alberta Esports Association. So they, they're they a major player, a major supporter. Uh, so definitely check out the events that they run. It's all free, and they have a lot of cool prizes. So if you're not tired of League of Legends after this week, or you're not part of the schools and you still want to compete in esports, the Gaming Stadium has some great events coming up. Um, but uh, in terms of the prizes, we have uh, first and second First, second, and third prizes from Herbaland with a bunch of different products and gift cards, as well as uh, Sport Factor bags, courtesy of Sports Factor. And then we're also giving away three most MVP prizes um, for, for the players selected by their coaches, um, courtesy of Herbaland as well. So it's certainly really, really exciting. So we, we do want to thank all the sponsors. And if there are any other sponsors who want to get involved and support this and, and help build this up, by all means, feel free to reach out and you know we'll, we'll make something happen. Um, I want to kind of dial back because I just remembered, you know, even with the social aspect of this, Corbin and I have a pre-existing relationship to all of this. And uh, so for, for everyone who, who, who might not know, a bit of a fun fact is uh, Corbin was actually one of my TAs when I was studying at the University of Alberta. Um, I finished engineering and I took an after degree in education. And one of the courses that I took uh, was video games and, and education. And I forget what the course number was. It, it, you know, it's kind of indicative of how much I ended up paying attention. <laughs> but uh, but Corbett was uh, my TA for that class uh, before I dropped out of my after degree when I got hired as an engineer. Uh, so I'm also a university dropout. But uh, yeah, there's there's some tie-ins tie there with, with Corbett. And even with, although this is not the club I belonged with, my brother, uh, who's also on the ASA teams, uh, started this the Smash Brothers Club at McNally uh, way back when. Um, that... Uh, I don't think is there anymore, but it was certainly a special, special time with the student group that was there and, and Corbett being uh, affiliated with that as well. So quite great. Okay. So Corbett, do you have any, as we wrap up the opening ceremonies here, is, is there any last words you have for the audience and, and for the players? Sure. Yeah. Uh, just thank you so much for tuning in for your for your support. Thank you, players, for getting involved. I'm I'm really happy that this opportunity exists, and you know it's not possible without any of the stakeholders, without ASA, without my teachers, without my student volunteers, <laughs> without the players, uh, teacher supervisors from the different schools, coaches, uh, and I'm all you really viewers excited. at home. Yeah, I'm just I'm <laughs> so excited to see how. This is going to be some pretty intense League of Legends. I am so looking forward to the casting on this. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I have right now. Yeah, I'm I'm about ready to sit back and uh, watch all this happen. I, I guess for the uh, the viewers here to break down the schedule for for this weekend, we have the four quarterfinals that are happening one after the other today, as well as one of the two semifinals, and then we'll kick off tomorrow with the second semifinals match followed by the third place tiebreaker, and then followed by the finals. All the events will be best of one, with the exception of finals, which will be a best of three to close out the event. So I'm so excited to, to see who's going to you know claim the title as, as the best East, uh, high school esports team for this event. Oh, it's and so in, cool. a, in addition to that title, Victor, we have the, the oh. uh, brand new League of, League of Legends Cup. <laughs> to unveil. That's right. Yeah. The trophy. <laughs> We have the trophy. Uh, so because of you know pandemic reasons, we don't have any of the physical prizes here with us. We don't want to be touching anything. But uh, we have this amazing. Was it was that made by one of the teachers? It was just uh, like homemade. Yeah, yeah. One of uh, the teachers on my, my committee, he three D printed it, painted it. Uh, wow, it, uh, it looks incredible. And so I can't wait for one of our our teams this weekend to be putting that in their trophy case at their school. Yeah, I actually just shared the Twitter. I think if you, if you take a look at that tweet, you'll see the schedule for today. And you'll also see that amazing trophy that someone handmade. That is so cool. That's when you know the teachers care. You know, that's when you know the people involved. Are, they care. They put their time into making something so special. That's so cool. Okay. Well, that's probably it. Everyone's probably tired of hearing us talk. Let's get <laughs> to the action. Yeah. So thanks so much again, Corbett, for joining us. Um, certainly the two of us are excited to, to watch this unfold. And we'll see you all after the event or in the closing ceremonies.